This video is on typical intercostal nerve. In this, we will discuss the origin of the typical intercostal nerve, its course, branches, distribution, that is the structures supplied, and finally, the relevant clinical anatomy. Intercostal nerves. I have described about the intercostal nerves, how many intercostal nerves are there, what exactly they are, uh, which are atypical and typical intercostal nerves. I have uh, described all this in the previous video. I'll put the link of that video in the description box. Now to just revise briefly, uh, intercostal nerves are the ventral or the uh, anterior primary rami of thoracic spinal nerves. We all know that we have 12 thoracic spinal nerves. So therefore, we will also have 12 ventral primary rami also. Now the intercostal nerves, right, they will be present in the intercostal spaces, right? So although we have 12 ribs, but we will have only 11 intercostal spaces. So therefore, intercostal nerves are 11 in number corresponding to 11 intercostal spaces. The ventral ramus of 12th thoracic nerve is called subcostal nerve because that will be running just below the 12th rib. And which are now the typical intercostal nerve, which we will discuss in this video. Typical intercostal nerves are only four. And these are third to sixth. That is third, fourth, fifth and sixth intercostal nerves. And why they are typical intercostal nerves? Because they are confined to their respective intercostal spaces in the thoracic wall. They do not supply any other part of the body. They will supply the muscles and mainly the skin which is present over that typical intercostal space. Now let us look at the course of the typical intercostal nerve. For this, in this diagram, we can see the cross section of a typical uh, intercostal space. This is anterior end where you can see sternum and this is the posterior end of the intercostal space where we have a thoracic vertebra. Now in this one, we can see here within the vertebral foramen or part of vertebral canal lies the spinal cord. This is the anterior root this is the posterior root of the spinal nerve where we can see the dorsal root ganglion also the anterior the motor root posterior the sensory root they join together to form here the spinal nerve right now the spinal nerve divides into a posterior ramus we will not talk about this and a ventral ramus this is the intercostal nerve right so we will be discussing only about this let us look at its course now so uh, the typical intercostal nerve enters the intercostal space at its vertebral end so this whole thing is the intercostal space right so it enters the intercostal space at its vertebral end so next what happens is now this runs laterally right so you can see it is running laterally behind the sympathetic trunk you can see a sympathetic ganglion here so it is present behind that then it is going to run more laterally between the pleura and you can see a green structure here this is the internal intercostal membrane or posterior intercostal membrane which is actually a fibrous continuation of the internal intercostal muscle so there it will be running first you can see it enters at the vertebral end of the intercostal space then runs laterally behind the sympathetic chain or sympathetic trun runs further laterally between the pleura and the internal intercostal membrane or posterior intercostal membrane now next what happens is it is now going to enter the costal groove of the corresponding ring which cannot be seen here I'll show you I have a diagram of that also so it will enter into the costal groove which is present on the near the lower border of the rib right so it will enter the costal groove and then it starts running laterally and forward in a neurovascular plane right so here you can see only nerve but the vessels will be also there in the costal groove and this is between the plane the neurovascular plane is between two muscles which two muscles that is outside you have the internal intercostal muscle and on the deeper or inner aspect you have the innermost intercostal muscle so the neurovascular bundle is going to run in which uh, this thing space the space which is present between the internal intercostal muscle and 
innermost intercostal this is known as neurovascular plane this you have to remember now it runs in this uh, neurovascular plane and runs forward just before right the sternum the lateral border of the sternum this nerve is going to pierce now the inner internal intercostal muscle and again a green structure you can see here this is the external intercostal membrane or anterior intercostal membrane right fibrous continuation of external intercostal muscle so it pierces internal uh, internal intercostal muscle anterior intercostal membrane and you will have here also the pectoralis major and emerges as anterior cutaneous nerve so this is the typical course of a typical intercostal nerve let us now look at the branches of a typical intercostal nerve for that matter any nerve in our body will definitely have some sensory branches some motor if it is a mixed nerve so it will have sensory branches right and the motor branches motor branches will supply the skeletal muscles here and the sensory branches will be supplying the different receptors which are mainly present in the uh, skin here in addition to that in the thoracic region we have the sympathetic trunks so the typical intercostal nerve will also be sending communicating branches to the sympathetic trunk so we will have three kinds of branches communicating branches motor branches and sensory branches let us look at them one by one but before that just look at this this is the transverse section of the spinal cord this is the posterior aspect and this is the anterior aspect so this is the sensory root with the uh, sensory ganglion uh, emerging from the spinal cord and this is the ventral root of a spinal nerve which is a motor root now these two roots join together to form the spinal nerve the spinal nerve that divides into a dorsal ramus and into a ventral ramus which we call as intercostal nerve so we are now concerned with only uh, which uh, intercostal nerves third fourth fifth and sixth because these are the typical intercostal nerve so you can consider this any one of them maybe consider this as the fourth uh, intercostal nerve right so let us look at the branches now so the first branches will be communicating branches right communicating branches that means each nerve that is each typical intercostal nerve here will be connected to sympathetic ganglion via white ramus and gray ramus communicantes or communicants right so here you can see this is the white ramus communicantes and this is the gray ramus communicantes right the white ramus is distal gray ramus is proximal attachment to the intercostal nerve white ramus that carries preganglionic sympathetic fibers so that means the uh, neurons are present here in the lateral horn of the spinal cord and then they will pass through the intercostal nerve and will be relaying here in the sympathetic ganglion the neurons which are located in the sympathetic ganglion their axons will comprise or will form the gray ramus communicantes and they will reach back to the intercostal nerve to be distributed through this right so first branches are which branches communicating branches uh, they are communicating with uh, which structure sympathetic ganglion and how many communicating branches are there white ramus and gray ramus which one carries preganglionic sympathetic fibers white ramus which carries postganglionic sympathetic fibers it is the gray ramus now let us look at other branches the other branches are motor branches right now here we have many unnamed muscular branches which you can see which will arise all along its course right so few i have labeled as m there will be many more also which i have not labeled here so these are the muscular branches to intercostal muscles along its course you have external intercostal internal intercostal innermost intercostal so they will be supplying them right then there is another branch which will be arising from the uh, intercostal nerve at the level of angle of rib right and this is known as collateral branch so this arises near the angle of the rib and then runs along the lower margin of intercostal space remember previously i told you that the main intercostal nerve runs in the costal groove right so costal groove is present at the upper end of the intercostal space right right and this will be 
collateral uh, branch will be running along the lower margin of intercostal space this also will supply intercostal muscles in addition to that uh, serratus posterior superior muscle right let us look at other branches now so here you can see the branches muscular branches right from the collateral branch of intercostal nerve and cb is the collateral branch now we let us look at the sensory branches right now sensory branches will be given uh, there will be some unnamed sensory branches and there will be some named sensory branches right so unnamed sensory branches you can see here they are labeled as s right these are unnamed branches from intercostal nerve as well as from the collateral branch and what are they going to supply they are going to supply the parietal pleura and the periosteum of the ribs so that is what we can see here okay so sensory branches and motor branches these are unnamed branches now look at let us look at some other branches which are named so these are the you have here two cutaneous branches two named cutaneous branches and these are the first one is the lateral cutaneous which you can see is arising here from the main intercostal nerve so this is going to this nerve actually arises at the angle of the rib but allow it courses along with the main intercostal nerve and at the mid axillary line right at that level it is going to pierce intercostal muscles and other muscles and then divide into an anterior branch and a posterior branch to supply the skin over antero lateral wall of the thorax so you can see along this part of the thoracic wall that is antero lateral aspect of the thoracic wall this here the skin will be supplied by anterior and posterior branches of lateral cutaneous nerve now the last branch right the named branch is the anterior cutaneous branch which you can see here right so this anterior cutaneous nerve will also divide it will also pierce through the intercostal muscles pectoralis major muscle and emerge on the uh, super in the superficial fascia and this will also divide into a small medial branch and a lateral branch right and this will supply skin over the anterior wall of the thorax so these are the branches of a typical intercostal nerve to revise again first is the communication branches to the sympathetic ganglion white ramus communicantes and gray ramus communicantes then second we have a collateral branch which arises at the angle of the rib then we have some unnamed muscular branches from the main intercostal nerve as well as from the collateral branch then we have sensory branches unnamed sensory branches from main intercostal nerve as well as from the collateral branch and these unnamed sensory branches they will supply the parietal pleura and the periosteum of the rib we have now two more named cutaneous branches one is lateral cutaneous branch which emerges uh, on the in the superficial fascia or right that is at the mid axillary line and this will supply the skin over the antero lateral wall of the, the thorax then we have anterior cutaneous branch which is going to emerge just lateral to the sternum and this will divide into medial and lateral branches and will supply the skin over the anterior wall of the thorax so here in this picture it becomes clear this is the anterior aspect this is the posterior aspect this is a typical intercostal nerve this you can see uh, this is the upper rib this is the lower rib right so if we consider that this is the fourth uh, Uh, intercostal nerve then you can see here this is the nerve and how it uh, lies or runs in the costal groove here right at its lower border is the costal groove and the arrangement of the structures in the costal groove is van right you have posterior intercostal vein then you have posterior intercostal artery and then you have the intercostal nerve so, so this is the main intercostal nerve which is running in the costal groove here you can see the lateral cutaneous branch here you can see the anterior cutaneous branch and you can also see here where the rib has been removed this is the costal groove and how the structures are arranged 
V A N vein artery nerve. Now, in the lower part of the intercostal space, you can see a branch running here, and this is the collateral branch which is given here at the angle, and then it is going to run in the lower part of the intercostal space. Okay, coming to clinical anatomy, suppose you have to produce local anesthesia over a part of the thoracic wall. So, how will you, where exactly you will uh, give the intercostal nerve block? So, here the anesthetic solution will be injected near the origin of the intercostal nerve, right? So, so that all the branches, they will be affected and that is just lateral to the vertebra. So, this is where exactly the site where the intercostal nerve uh, block is given. Now, there is a condition known as herpes zoster, right? This is a viral infection which uh, can involve spiral ganglion. So, in this viral disease involving spiral ganglion, you can see the vesicular eruptions would be there and they will be appearing along the dermatome of the affected nerves. Sometimes one nerve is involved, sometimes more nerves are involved. So, you will have a typical picture of this right the eruptions will be along a line right that is along the distribution of the nerve right so this will be the dermatome of suppose this is of the sixth uh, intercostal nerve right so along that you will find the uh, eruptions now here if you can see this is a vertebra it may get involved in tuberculosis and the pus that will be formed right that will may actually extend or go or may track along the intercostal nerve and intercostal vessels and can project right uh, at the uh, over the skin right may have a projection or just beneath the skin where exactly it can have that can be at the sites of emergence of lateral and anterior cutaneous branches right so in this case if there is tuberculosis of thoracic vertebra, the pus may be seen right just beneath uh, the uh, mid axillary line that right and because here the in lateral cutaneous nerve pierces the muscles and reaches the superficial fascia and another site would be just lateral to the sternum right. So, if you have pus in these regions, one of the reason could be that the person is suffering from tuberculosis of the vertebrae. So, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed, please subscribe my channel so that I can put more such videos and if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy, all types of that, then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com. Thanks once again.